Hello everyone, uh, welcome to another video on my channel. Uh, just thought I'd do a comparison of the Speedmaster versus the Daytona. Um, I don't know about you guys, but when I started looking into watches, uh, and once I decided on a chronograph, uh, it really became a tough decision uh, as to which one to go for. Uh, in the real world, it is not such a difficult choice because this watch retail costs about half of that and with the current demand you could probably buy three of these for the same price as this. Um, so let's start with the basics. They're both chronographs. Uh, they both come in stainless steel bracelets although I've swapped this one out to an Omega uh, rally strap. Um, at that stage that's where the similarity ends. This watch is a manual wind, this one's an automatic. Uh, this one's got screwed on crowns and significantly more reliable underwater than this. Uh, with the pushed on crowns I wouldn't take this watch swimming because if you did accidentally activate a pusher underwater you do risk getting water into the case. Um, but when it comes to history and significance in the watch world these guys are really tough to choose you know one or the other. Uh, let's start with the Speedmaster. Well the word iconic is used a lot when it comes to watches but I think this is one of the most iconic uh, wristwatches out there. Uh, anyone would know what a Speedmaster is. Uh, everyone would know the history of it. The watch was made initially for motorsports and then it ended up in the moon uh, as NASA picked it as one of the most reliable watches and we all know the story where this watch well not this watch but the original Speedmaster pretty much saved the lives of astronauts during the landing um, so let's see it's a manual wind it hasn't been wound up so I'll give it a wind this is one of the little annoyances of this watch the crown is very flush to the case and it's got crown guards and you're gonna have to put a good bit of effort into winding this. You can see the second hand at nine o'clock starting to move. And that's it, it's fully wound. And there's the chronograph running. It's an extremely simple watch to, to use and wear. Just pull the crown out, set the time, and off you go. Um, extremely thin compared to other sports watches um, and very comfortable to wear. Uh, the bracelet is of good quality uh, but I have too many bracelet watches so I put it on this uh, perforated strap uh, made by Omega um, and I bought this rather expensive deployant clasp sold by Omega but uh, it is worth the money because it does finish the watch very well. So that's what the watch looks like. On the wrist uh, I have my reversal. Take that off. And that's what it looks like on the wrist. Very good wrist presence. Um, the padding on this rally strap makes it even more prominent on the wrist because there's a significant amount of padding and the strap has this major curvature going on here. Uh, so I like it because it, it looks very sporty and the clasp is very s safe and uh, I bought the brushed versus the polished because it doesn't show scratches as much as the polished. So that's the Speedmaster.
um, an amazing watch. I think anyone starting in watches should probably start with this because there's a very high chance that you'll want one. Uh, so you might as well start with this because uh, if you weren't too fussed uh, about owning every significant watch, you could just stop with this and uh, be happy. Um, look, so that's a detail. That's not a detailed review of the Speedmaster. I think I've done a video of that before. So let's come to the Daytona. <clears throat> so this is the the sought after Daytona right now. The Daytona ceramic white dial. Um, so this is an automatic wire movement. It's uh, extremely robust uh, Rolex 4130 I believe. Um, essentially the same watch as the previous one um, except that they changed the dial to have the black circles around the chrono subdials and uh, a shiny black ceramic uh, bezel and the, the numbers are slightly changed or significantly changed. So this watch is uh, automatic so it wasn't running when I picked it up but even the little bit of movement that I've done now has started the second sand but I usually sort of give it about 10 turns and there the watch is ready to go um, and this is a the thing about the chrono hands you do need to unscrew them and just press that that's the second sign running it stopped and you need to remember to screw these down because as I said you don't want these getting pushed on the water so very simple watch <coughs> Uh, brilliant uh, oyster clasp, oyster bracelet and the Rolex deployant is probably the best engineered deployant out there and it's also got this link system that allows you to make the strap a bit longer or shorter so you could if you were feeling that the strap was a bit tight, you could open it up or you could just lock it in place. So on the wrist, it's a very nice watch. Um, I like that this isn't huge on the wrist. It's a very subtle size difference between 40 to 42, but when you wear it, you can see uh, it wears much smaller than the Omega uh, and the Daytona wears much smaller than uh, say 40 millimeter Submariner even uh, it's just the way the the case is made this case reminds me more of a date just case than a professional uh, Submariner case uh, so that's the famous uh, Rolex Daytona um, again if you have the lemon or 12,000 USD that they're asking for or maybe even more um, I paid retail for this and I can't recall exactly what the retail was um, I was quite lucky to get this because the waiting list now are around five years so I'm just going to zoom in to show you the differences in the dial. So, so as you can see it's got the Daytona in red and it's got the, the standard Daytona writing but the inner dial, inner sub dials are covered in black instead of silver like the previous one. I never liked the previous Daytona. Um, I found the dial didn't look right uh, more than anything. The stainless steel bezel um, that I 
you know, I've, I've seen so many examples with the scratched up stainless steel bezel and that would have annoyed me a lot. So if you did want to buy a Daytona, I'd say this is the one for, for now, unless you really like the previous one. Uh, but look, you can't go wrong with either one of these. If you want to buy a chronograph and just have one chronograph, just get one of these and done. Uh, I'm quite happy to own both. Uh, if you have any questions about these or any of my other watches, uh, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, thanks for watching.